Match in prospect, and Barry Davis is commentating. A few memories will be stirred for Lee Dixon, who left Stoke for Arsenal two years ago, and for Steve Bold, who followed him in June 1988. The Stoke defence now includes two youngsters at its heart, 20-year-old Andy Holmes and 19-year-old Lee Fowler. Carl Saunders replaces the cup-tied Tony Ellis up front, and Paul Ware, 18, is a late replacement for the injured Lee Palin. Injuries rob Arsenal of Alan Smith and Nigel Winterburn, and there's no place in their starting lineup once again for England's David Rowcastle. But back comes Paul Davis to start a match for the first time this season. And uh, Alan Ball in good spirits, contest against one of his old teams. He joined them after they'd won the FA Cup in the double year in 1771 and played with George Graham, the current Arsenal manager in the semi-final and final of 72, the semi-final against Stoke City. There, the most famous face of the Victoria ground, Sir Stanley Matthews. Can we really expect Stoke City to close the gap of 41 places? The team threatened by relegation at the bottom of the second division to upset the league champions. Well, it's happened before. Only chance for Saunders to chase. David O'Leary with him. Out by Steve Bold. Paul West. Now Quinn wearing seven. It's uh, playing down the middle. This is Lee Dixon. And that's not the best pass he's ever made on this ground, I'm sure. The referee, Neil Midgley, taking an afternoon off from his business and uh, speaking engagements. And he'll have the difficult job of judging what is a fair tackle on this difficult surface. And Arsenal playing three at the back, really. O'Leary, Bold, and uh, the skipper to O'Leary's left, Tony Adams. Groves. Michael Thomas. Dixon is the most forward player, getting a few fairly friendly boos. This is Perry Groves. That's a good stop. Brave goalkeeping and an opportunity wasted by Nar Quinn. He was much, much too hasty, surely. A brave goalkeeping by Peter Fox. But Quinn will be disappointed he didn't take the chance. And, uh, good to see a good crowd here at the Victoria Ground, though not the biggest of the season. They've had over 27,000 for their renewal of acquaintances with Port Vale, now in the same division. There was another one out of the sky. Quinn got a nice little touch there and got a second one that was better. Good challenge by Fowler. O'Leary. Bold. That's a super ball to Dixon. And they've got two going in. And neither made it count because Peter Fox denied them. It was Merson who made the uh, shot. Could have been any one of two. They were, to uh, coin a phrase used once before, Stoke City, they were undressed then. Turned away, off the line, by Cliff Carr. Richardson with the corner. Quinn didn't get a full touch. Go kick. Hackett. Higgins, too strong. Michael Thomas. Trying to get there first, but he left it instead to uh, Dixon to c carry on. <laughs> Corner number seven for Arsenal.
Quinn finally breaks the deadlock. Didn't have to rise too high. But he's got the fans behind that goal on their toes. Arsenal having taken the lead with really the simplest of goals. The corner just played in on the near post. No knock on. Just one header from Quinn who came from a bit further back on the six-yard line. No chance for Fox. Into the last two minutes. Castle Dixon Rowcastle again it's lots of form David Rowcastle has been a bit of a mystery to the Arsenal management from an England point of view it's better that it should be at this stage rather than later maybe for Arsenal's too this is better from him was hoping Kamara Quinn getting goal side or trying to got a long way to go Kamara Kamara needs help Gary Hackett's being forced away Saunders best chance of the match and not taken Great applause from the crowd. And Alan Ball's look was almost philosophical. Well, Stoke didn't quite make it. Arsenal City won. from Division 3. Liverpool.